Welcome to Messages from Mother Earth. I'm Lashila Lewis. And Gooba. Hey, Lashila, what's today's message from Mother Earth? Well, Goober, you know indigenous people have lived in North America for thousands and thousands of years. You have? Oh, my ancestors came over on a Mayflower, and I thought that was a long time. We took care of the land well for a really long time. And just like people today, we had to put our garbage somewhere. Oh, you mean like styrofoam, tin cans, old worn out socks? More like clamshells, animal bones, and corn husks. When archaeologists find- Whoa, whoa, Ella Shyla, big words. What's an archaeologist? I'm asking for a friend. An explorer who investigates ancient cultures by digging up old sites. Ah, oh, like the pyramids. Yeah, yeah, so when they find an ancient indigenous site, they usually find a big pile of garbage buried nearby. Ah, and by searching through the garbage, they can find out how the people live. Right, ancient indigenous people composted. We're going to visit an indigenous community in Arizona that still carries on that practice. They recycle tons of garden waste every year. In 1993, the tribe opened the Salt River Landfill, a 200-acre facility with a mission to protect the environment, promote public health, and ultimately conserve the region's natural resources. Oh, so instead of putting their lawn cuttings and their branches and stuff in the garbage, they put it in the compost. We're going to be trying a new technology called the bioreactor technology. Essentially, it's a way of trying to break down the garbage quicker so we don't end up with the environmental concerns long term. Normally, landfills are operated where you try to keep liquids out of the landfill to protect the groundwater, but at the end up having a dry tomb effect where the waste takes years and years and years to break down 50 years or more in a place like Arizona that's extremely dry. What we're going to be doing is actually adding moisture to that waste to try to speed up that decomposition rate and at the same time collect the gas that's produced during the decomposition and utilize it to generate power with. The main thing is, is keeping a material out of the landfill that we could reuse. So by keeping it, this material out of the landfill, probably every 10 years or so, we're saving a year's worth of airspace and prolong the life of the landfill. All of the things that we now call sustainability or you know green building or you know, green ways of doing things were, were always part of the community's life and, and way of living. So now just finding ways to incorporate that into a more contemporary life, I think is, is a challenge, but also an opportunity for the young people of the community to connect with the elders that, that still do remember when things were very sustainable um, traditionally, but finding ways to still incorporate that. What are you doing with all that leftover food, Goober? I'm gonna go bury this beside my house, so in a thousand years, when the archaeologists dig it up, they're gonna know that I had healthy snacks. Maybe putting them into your compost bin is a better idea. Oh, yeah! And then, next spring, I'll have soil to grow new plants. Oh, oh, and then those plants, they're gonna become compost to grow the next plants. That's the cycle of life. Uh, 